All right. Hello, and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speaker Webinar Series. I'm Stacey Roman, and I will be moderating this discussion today. We are pleased to have Maurice Hirsch, Director of Legal Strategies at Palestinian Media Watch, join us to discuss stopping the PA's pay for slay. Mr. Hirsch will speak for 10 to 15 minutes, then open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Mr. Maurice Hirsch. Thank you, Stacey, and uh, uh, thank you to the Middle East Forum for, for hosting me. Um, it's hard to talk about the subject that I'm going to talk about because it is so very personal for me. It's a subject which really did call into question much of my professional career um, in the IDF. Um, when I joined Palestinian Media Watch, I understood that there was a program where the PA, where the Palestinian Authority, plays salaries to terrorists. Now, that was hard for me to understand because I spent 20 years in the IDF, most of the time prosecuting uh, um, Palestinian terrorists. In my last position, I was the head of the prosecution for Judea and Samaria, in the courts in Judea and Samaria, the main courts that prosecute probably 95% of the, of the terrorists that you've uh, um, ever heard about, and even more of those that you haven't heard about. So when I finally understood that there's a program that incentivizes and rewards these terrorists for carrying out their terrorist actions, it really did call into question much of what I'd done before. When I was standing in court asking that a terrorist be sent to jail for as long as possible, I didn't understand that what I was really asking for was for the opportunity for the Palestinian Authority to make that terrorist rich. That's a hard statement. So I'm now going to give you the background to, 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 to those payments and so that we can understand what they include and how that, that system works and what we're really trying to do today. Um, when I say we, I mean Palestinian Media Watch and together with the Middle East Forum and with other partners in order to try and combat that phenomenon. So really the story starts already in 1994 with the creation of the Palestinian Authority. Already from then, according to affidavits given by the Palestinian Authority in court, already from then, the Palestinian Authority has been incentivizing terrorism by paying the terrorists a financial reward. The, the practice really was codified in 2004. At the end of 2004, we're talking about the end of the period of Yasser Arafat as chairman of the Palestinian Authority and the start of the period of of current chairman Mahmoud Abbas. Um, and in 2004, the Palestinian Authority passes the, the law of prisoners and release prisoners. In that law, they say a few very, sit down a few very fundamental provisions. Firstly, the terrorists are the fighting class of the Palestinian Authority. No peace deal can ever be reached without the release of every last terrorist. One provision. The second provision is that every terrorist in an Israeli jail and every terrorist released from an Israeli jail is entitled to a monthly cash reward for having carried out his acts against the occupation, as they call them, and have been arrested. In 2006, the Palestinian Authority will then set a pay scale. The pay scale goes up the more time you spend in prison the more salary you get paid. So if we go by the Palestinian Authority's rationale for these payments, the terrorists are the soldiers of the Palestinian Authority, as in the same way as a soldier in service receives a larger pay as he spends more time working for the government, for the army, serving in the army, so too a terrorist should receive a pay, pay, pay scale that goes up with the time that he spends in jail. In 2011, incredibly, as Mahmoud Abbas is trying to explain to the world how he's this moderate leader and how he's trying to promote the peace accords between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, Mahmoud Abbas signs new regulations which raise the pay scale to a whole new level. Mahmoud Abbas will set the minimum salary that a terrorist will be paid for going to jail at 1,400 shekels. Now, that doesn't sound a lot. Let's put it into American terms. It's about $350, $400 a month, which may not sound a lot. 
But when you understand that that is the average salary of the legitimate PA workers, i.e. law-abiding people who get up in the morning, don't carry out terrorist uh, attacks, go to work, come home, and try and provide for their family. If you're a terrorist in jail, you're immediately getting that. After three years, that salary will jump up to 2,000 shekel. After five years, you'll suddenly get 4,000 shekel. And then a whole pile of other benefits will also kick in. If you spend more than five years in jail, you will suddenly receive not only the, pen, the salary that you're receiving while you're in jail, but also a pension for the rest of your life. Once you've spent 10 years in jail, you're then guaranteed a position in the Palestinian Authority, a paid position on a much higher pay scale. The only condition of that pay scale and of that benefit, this has to be understood, and no, I'm not making a, step, a mistake, the only condition of that position is that if the PA actually asks you to come to work, then you need to come to work. But if they don't ask you, you can just sit at home and receive your salary because you're an employee of the PA. You're now a retired employee of the PA. So that's one part of the Pay for, pay for Slaves uh, um, uh, program. It provides a tremendous incentive. So just a little anecdote on the way. I'm the head of the prosecution for Jordan Samaria one day a defense lawyer comes in and we're discussing a punishment in a specific case and I offered the terrorist 52 months in jail. The defense lawyer says I have to take it to my client, I understood. He comes back a week later and says my client has rejected your offer. I said okay so we'll go to trial, not a problem. We do it every day. He said no you don't understand. He wants to stay in jail for 60 months. I'm looking at him and I said what's the story? You want to stay in jail for longer than the prosecution's actually asking you? I, I didn't understand at the time, having now left the army, retired from the army, and joined Palestinian Media Watch and understood the pay for scale, pay for, uh, uh, pay for slave program, I now understand his reasoning. Why spend 52 months in jail and be released just having received your salary when at the price of just another eight months, you can receive a, a pension for the rest of your life. That was what guided him. The second part of the pay for, for slave program um, is paying financial rewards to the families of dead terrorists. Terrorist goes out, blows himself up on a bus, kills 20 people. The PA then comes to the family and says, here, take money every month for the rest of your lives. To the parents, to the spouses, whoever it may be. Now this program was really what kicked off a tremendous train reaction. In March, 8th of March, 2016, an American officer in the army veteran called Taylor Force is walking along the promenade in, in Tel Aviv. Behind him comes uh, uh, Bashar Masalcha, a Palestinian terrorist, stabs him to death. The terrorist is killed. Bashar's family starts receiving a monthly payment from the Palestinian Authority. This did not bide well with Taylor's parents that the Palestinian Authority was rewarding the murderers of his son, a decorated officer, veteran, who had served in Iraq, who had served in Afghanistan. And now the PA was rewarding the family of his murderer. The Force family uh, um, then started out on a, on, a, on a tremendous campaign, which ended up with the legislation of the Taylor Force Act. March 2018, Congress and, the, and, and, and President Trump signed into legislation the Taylor Force Act. The Taylor Force Act says something very simple. As long as the Palestinian Authority continues with this program, no direct aid can be given by the administration to the Palestinian Authority. This stops somewhere in the region of $350 million worth of aid. The Palestinian Authority writes to the Trump administration, to uh, Secretary Pompeo, and says, you know what? We don't want your money. Paying salaries to terrorists and paying to the families of dead terrorists is something so cardinal to us that we're willing to give up on all of your aid. We don't want it. 
we are willing for everyone to suffer as long as we can pay the terrorists. At the same time, Israel is passing legislation. Israel, as part of the Oslo Accords, gathers a tremendous amount of taxes on behalf of the Palestinian Authority. That money is then given to the Palestinian Authority. It provides for 50% of their annual budget. The Israeli law that passed says something very simple. Any money that the Palestinian Authority pays to salaries to terrorists and to the families of dead terrorists will be deducted from the money that Israel collects and gives over to the Palestinian Authority. The rationale is very simple. Israel waived those taxes as part of a peace program. They're given to the Palestinian Authority to promote peace. But once those taxes are being used to incentivize and reward terrorism against Israelis, there's no way that you can carry on with that. The Palestinian Authority in 2018 lost somewhere in the region of 1.2 billion shekel. That is somewhere the equivalent of about 7% of their budget. That is a tremendous loss. Unfortunately, the Palestinian Authority just doesn't care. They are happy for the Palestinians to be, um, to, to, to suffer. They're happy for the Palestinian Authority um, to, have, to rely on the rest of the world to donate money. They have not given up on that program. Which brings us to the new initiative that we launched, um, Palestinian Media Watch together with the Middle East Forum. Um, just two weeks ago, we approached uh, and together um, Congressman Doug Lamborn, who adopted our uh, uh, suggestion and wrote to President Trump, suggesting that the program, the facility, the organization that runs these programs is called the Commission for Prisoners Affairs. It's funded by the Palestinian Authority. It's headed by a guy called Kadri Abu Bakr, who was probably, according to some of uh, the literature, somehow involved in the first 1990 bombing of the World Trade Center, um, a history of terrorism. The suggestion was that, that, that President Trump add the Commission for Prisoners Affairs and Kadri Abu Bakr to the list of designated terrorist sponsors or sponsors of terrorism in the United States according to Executive Order 13224, which was promulgated after the 9-11 attacks. At the same time in Israel, we've written and we've uh, got a lot of uh, members of the Knesset on board to pressure the Israeli Minister of Defense to similarly declare the, the, the Commission of Prisoners Affairs as a terrorist organization. These new measures will give tremendous new powers, part of the global fight against terrorism, to now act against these, uh, act against these payments, whether it be the seizure of bank accounts whether it be a prohibition of funding any organization that then funds, gives material support to terrorists. Um, that would be the, the, the kick on effect, definitely from the, 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 the designation um, according to the executive order. And in Israel, it would also allow for the arrest and prosecution of anyone who's involved in that process. Um, that, if it's possible to give the background on the pay to slay uh, um, policy in 10 minutes and where we're standing today um, is how I would define that program. The clear evidence that we have is that these payments incentivize and reward terrorism. The Palestinian Authority tries to claim that these are just welfare payments. That's simply not true. Welfare has some type of a needs-based requirement. These payments have no needs-based uh, requirement. If you're a well-off terrorist who lives in a big villa, and, or if you're a poor terrorist who lives in a shack in a refugee camp, when you go to jail, you will receive the same basic payment. There is no difference. Similarly, if you're a terrorist who came from a, a well-off background and you've blown yourself up to, 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 kill, to kill Israelis, or if you were a destitute terrorist, the fam your family will receive the same payment. That's the first uh, uh, um, understanding. The second understanding is the Palestinian Authority law specifically prescribes these payments as a salary. A few years ago, when the Palestinian Authority was being pressured by the international community to stop these payments, they explained, well, these are just welfare payments. When they then decided to try and change that, their internal law, the, the 2004 
law of prisoners and, pris and release prisoners, um, they encountered tremendous backlash and they were unable to even promote a suggested legislation that would change the terminology used for these payments from a salary to welfare. Terrorists are people we are proud of. They are not welfare cases. That was the argument of the Palestinian Authority. And so we have to understand that these are payments that are solely based as rewards for acts of terrorism that were committed against Israelis by Palestinians with a specific, I forgot to mention, there's even a specific addition that's paid to Israeli Arab terrorists as an additional incentive for them to carry out acts of terrorism. That's the pay for slay system really in um, the 12 minute slot that I was given. Um, any questions uh, um, I would happy, be happy to answer. All right, thank you so much. He's the first question coming in, we have multiple forms of this, is where is all this money to pay these terrorists coming from? So the money that's coming in from the, uh, to the Palestinian Authority has a number of sources. Firstly, as I mentioned, Israel only deducts, or the Israeli law only deducts the amount that the Palestinian Authority spends on terrorism. So if any, the, the average over the last few years has been uh, from, the, from those tax incomes, has been somewhere in the region of 8.5, 8.6 billion shekel a year. The deduction is somewhere in the region of 700 million uh, um, shekels a year. So there's still plenty of money left over. Secondly, there's a tremendous amount of aid that flows into the, the Palestinian Authority. Um, Europe still gives a, an exceptionally large amount of aid. Um, the Arab countries still provide aid in 2019. Saudi Arabia, for example, provided a half a billion shekel worth of aid, direct aid to the Palestinian Authority. And the fourth uh, source or third source of income really is, is, is domestic tax collection by the Palestinian Authority. Um, they have their own tax uh, uh, um, system where they collect VAT and income tax and other taxes that they, that they have. So they have sources of, in, in, uh, of, of, of sources of funding it becomes particularly relevant when you have organizations like the, the European Union. The European Union understands the problematic nature of the pay for slave policy, but their answer is our money doesn't go to terrorists. Instead, they pay for the salaries of the teachers in the education system and for schools. They completely neglect the fact that money is fungible. If the Palestinian Authority does not need to spend its money on schools and education, they can spend their own money paying salaries to terrorists. In 2017, the Palestinian Authority spent six times more on benefits to terrorists than it spent on, on its own needy, because most of the program for funding the benefits to the Palestinian needy was funded by the Palestinian Authority. Great. Is there evidence that the Qataris are involved in the Palestinian pay for slay program? No, we haven't seen uh, um, direct evidence of Qatari involvement per se. Um, Qatar, as we know, provides not a small amount of financial support to the needy people in Gaza, ostensibly only going through Hamas, which is a different institution from the Palestinian Authority. Just to explain that, in 2000, there are two major political parties in, uh, um, in the Palestinian Authority. One is Fatah, led by uh, Mahmoud Abbas. That's been the party of Yasser Arafat. They have been the party that have been in control of the areas in Judea and Samaria, and the, um, where, the, where the Palestinian Authority has been given jurisdiction. And then the other big party is Hamas. The last elections, last general elections held in the, in the Palestinian Authority were held in 2006, Hamas won the outright majority. Hamas should be the leaders of the Palestinian Authority. They were deposed by Fatah, but they now control, as a result of what's commonly known as the war for Gaza in the summer of 2007, Hamas saw that Fatah had usurped the authority that had been given through elections and deposed uh, um, the Fatah uh, government to control. So Hamas now controls Gaza. The Qataris fund the poor people in Gaza 
because the Palestinian Authority, fighting with internally with Hamas, has put up all types of obstacles to that process. So that Qatar, on the other hand, does provide general budgetary support to the Palestinian Authority as well. Um, and that obviously, if you see money as fungible, some of that could possibly be uh, um, attributed to or definitely provide an alternative for providing other services on behalf of the Palestinian Authority and allowing them to pay the salaries to terrorists. So definitely that anyone who contributes to the Palestinian Authority funds and aid is indirectly contributing to pay for slay, including the Qataris. So what effect do these payments have on the Palestinian economy in general? So, so I think there can be different arguments that can, made, uh, uh, that can be made about that. For the terrorists themselves, um, it's tremendous purchasing power. They are in jail. They have no expenses. Um, they're being paid ever-growing salaries for the time that they spend in jail. Um, whilst they're in jail, they're provided also by the Palestinian Authority um, with educational services. Um, they create better terrorists. Um, and so that as a reward and incentive for terrorism is something which could possibly in, be seen in a warped manner as something which is positive and an injection of money into the economy. Um, on the other hand, these payments are also the source of tremendous friction. Um, they incentivize terrorism. Once you have a, a clear financial incentive, cash rewards for terrorism, when you have wide-scale terrorism, that's never good for the economy. And then when you take into account that these payments were previously some 7% of, of the budget every year, and are now, as a result of the sanctions that have been imposed, the PA is really losing double that. They're paying the incentives and losing an equivalent amount plus extra, the US uh, uh, contribution. That's a tremendous blow to the Palestinian economy. It could be growing much more every year were they not wasting the money paying salaries to terrorists and using it for, for capital growth, and which would also open the door to receive all of the money that is being withheld from the international sanctions, whether it be the US, which no longer gives direct aid. Canada has stopped its direct aid. Australia has stopped its aid to the Palestinian Authority. Holland, just a year and a, and a bit ago, stopped its direct aid to the Palestinian Authority. Other governments have cut back their aid to the Palestinian Authority. These payments are a source of tremendous limitations on the Palestinian Authority because of A, they're a waste of money, and B, they've brought on substantial sanctions that limit the amount of aid that the Palestinian Authority could enjoy. Thank you. Along those lines, uh, why wasn't the Israeli government able to cut off the funding before now? And is the government itself conflicted about the application of this law of withholding the funding? So I have to say uh, um, the government of Israel was very, very slow to take any action on this subject. Um, it was one of those things that, that, it, that was clearly happening but that no one really took the bull by the horns and said, we need to deal with this. Um, that was something that was started by two members of, of the Knesset, by Elazar Stern and by Avi Dichter in 2017. They initiated the bill, which would then become law, which would punish the PA for these payments. Um, within that, I can say that there's some type of a conflict regarding the position of the Israeli government. On the one hand, the law passed with an overwhelming majority of the 120 members of Knesset, 86 members of Knesset voted in favor of the law. On the other hand, the government itself has been very slow to also implement the law, um, which means that whilst they implemented it in 2019 regarding the PA payments in 2018, as of today, in 2020, the government is, is yet to make a decision to implement the law. So that's on, 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 on the one hand. For the Palestinians, 
these payments are, 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 are almost, they are the top priority. Mahmoud Abbas, the, the, the chairman of the Palestinian Authority, has said repeatedly that if there's only one penny left in the coffers of the Palestinian Authority, he will pay it to the terrorists and the families of the dead terrorists before he pays anyone else. For them, it's priority number one. Even with COVID, we saw the Palestinian Authority announced its decision at the end of March uh, regarding the payments of salary. They said with COVID, we need to stagger the payments in order to avoid crowding in the banks. Therefore, on the first day, we will pay the medical providers, the medical services. On the second day, we will provide the salaries for the security forces. On the third day, we will pay the terrorists. That's their, that's their priorities. Terrorists before teachers, terrorists before legitimate workers, terrorists before ev almost everyone else. So for the Palestinian Authority, these are probably the highest, uh, um, really the, the, the highest priority that they have. So I'm sure this is a very difficult question without radical change, but what can we do about this? So slowly but surely, things, uh, um, things we hope are, are, are changing. The, the restriction of aid from, from the US is something which, well, since I'm talking to, to, to a crowd of, 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 of people who are active, this is something that needs to be sustained over time. There is no way that the, that the Taylor Force Act or the aid that's withheld as a result of the pay, pay for slay act as, uh, of the pay for slay program should become a partisan issue. This should be a simple issue. Rewarding terrorism is unacceptable. If you have money to reward terrorists, pay cash rewards for murdering people, you do not need US aid. That should be a bipartisan stand. That's the first thing. Secondly, moving the taking forward since the PA has been unable to understand the message that they're doing themselves and the Palestinian people tremendous financial damage by this program, we now have to move this program one step forward. It now needs to become personal sanctions for the organizations, for the heads of the organizations. They need to be recognized as what they are. If you had an organization that was still paying, God forbid, obviously, still paying the 9-11 bombers sitting in jail, a monthly salary as a prize for murdering 3,500 people, you would clearly recognize that organization as a terrorist organization. That is what needs to be done today. Um, it may be the only thing that, that the Palestinian Authority will understand. You people are terrorists. And you must be recognized as terrorists. All right. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've come to the close of our webinar. Thank you again, Mr. Hirsch, for speaking with us today. Uh, thank you for me. Please do check out palestinianmediawatch.org uh, for more information, correct? Yes, indeed. Palwatch, P-A-L-W-A-T-C-H dot Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, and for our viewers, please be sure to join us Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern for an Israel update with Naved Dromi. And again, Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern for my story, the telling of an anti-Islamist Muslim with Dr. Judy Zudi Jasser. Thank you all for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a good day.